aesthetics. Okay. Come on. What up? What up? What up? Hey, I hear you. I hear you. Hey, what's going on, world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, a.k.a. Big Sarge, large and in charge. Am I running on the shelf, taking my greatest self up off the shelf? Well. You know what it is, man. It's speak grunt. Where the grunts we speak, we come, we talk about what's on our mind, what's going on in this time of life. You know what I'm saying? How we get it right. We encourage you to speak to and talk about what you're going through so we can see how to help you. To my front, almost to my left and my right, because I'm looking at a whole different camera tonight. You know who I got with me. I got Shooter and Whiskey, Charlie. Shooter, what's going on, man? What's been going on? What you telling people what's been going on real quick? Oh, man, you already know. We had this big celebration, man. Me and my wife renewed our vows, you know. Um, don't give it all yeah. away. Don't give it all away. <laughs> oh, okay. I ain't going give, to give it all to him, you know. But, yeah, man, you know, making moves, man. Getting shit in order, uh, putting putting together fitness programs, uh, getting these T-shirts done up and stuff for the business. You know, I'm um, enjoying life, man. Miami, all that good stuff. But yeah, we go we go separate it, you know, let y'all know the real doing the show, you know, just just a little appetizer right there. That's what's up. That's what's up. Whiskey Charlie, whiskey Charlie. Give him a give him a quick little snippet of what's been going on. How you been doing? I hear I hear the girls in the background. What's been up with it, Whiskey Charlie? I ain't uh, not a whole lot going oh well, actually a whole lot going on, a whole a whole lot of everything. Uh but uh I think the uh main point that I have I'm gonna put out there is uh, enjoying uh enjoying life, enjoying your family, uh doing everything I can to uh spend more uh quality time with them. So uh that's uh that's what uh my uh, main whole thing is that uh last couple weeks that we've missed out and uh, hadn't done a whole lot, but uh it's uh life with the family, man, enjoying it. That's what's up, man. Life with the family. I feel like I've been doing the same thing. Just uh, enjoying it and reflecting and taking it easy. Really taking it easy and taking it all in. But y'all know what time it is. Hold on, hold on, hold on real quick. Let me go to something. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Cause I want to make sure that I'm able to get what. Uh... Okay, 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 okay. I'm a uh, multitasking. You have to excuse me. There we go. I'm multitasking because I seen somebody. Kibby was typing on another page that he'll be there as we go live. So I was telling him that we was live right now. But you know what it is. It's grunt speak. By grunts, for grunts. Speak grunt. Thanks for correcting me, grunts. It's speak grunt. Still, by grunts, for grunts. Everybody welcome, but everybody cannot and will not be a member. It's just certain things you got to adhere to, certain things to identify you. And if you ain't got that 11B, just, just, just walk away from the entire conversation, G. But anyhow, quick PSA for you. Your kids might not need to hear this, but it'll bless them if they hear this, okay? Your kids may not need to hear this. It's going to be the words that you might fear from this, but it'll bless them if you just don't judge the messenger and listen to the message. It's grunt. It's speak grunt. Still a habit, man. It's speak grunt. So make sure you speak to us and talk about what you've been going through. Well, we play a little bit catch up. Talk about what we've been up to. What's been going on, man? It's been about two weeks. So I, I need you to, uh, to let's 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 start off first off in this in this catch up today. And while y'all down there in the chat, Whiskey Charlie, if you see anything in the chat on Facebook, let me know. Because if anybody is out there, I'm not seeing any chat flow right now. So drop a comment somewhere and let us know if uh, you see what's going on. But anyhow. During this week, we talking about catching up. It's been about two weeks since we've done the show, and there's been a lot of things going on. So, I want to start with the uh, I want to start with the George Floyd trial. I want to start with the George Floyd trial. I did not watch the trial. I didn't keep up with the trial. 
for, for a small amount of time, for a little while, I truly thought the trial was going to turn out like most trials turn out to be, that this gentleman was going to walk scot-free. It was going to be the same thing we normally see in society. But lo and behold, it shocked me. It was a guilty verdict, but we still waiting on the sentencing. But it's like, yo, we, it's, it's, I ain't going to say it's the start of a new beginning, but it was good to see something different. You know what I'm saying? So over the last few weeks, just catching up, what what was been going on? Did you did you watch that? Did you see that? How did that make you feel just as a human being? Wolf to you just as a human being and a black man and Whiskey Charlie to you as, as a white man. Not that saying any of us is prejudiced on this site, but we all see things in a different way. And it didn't affect you in any way. So, uh, Whiskey Charlie, tell me tell me what you think. What you got to say? Oh, we're well, going to start off with me here. Okay. Uh, yeah, look. I'm going to start off with you today. <laughs> <laughs> look, uh, you know what? Uh, I guess you could say that I uh, I paid attention to a certain uh, certain extent, but uh, I guess I don't I don't pay attention to so much to anything that doesn't involve my family or anything outside of my family. If it doesn't uh, involve me or my family, then I don't pay a whole lot of attention to a whole lot of things because the news seems to betray a whole lot of things. But at the same time, uh, I've said it before in other videos, I do understand that there is uh, injustice out there. But I know there's uh, several different types of injustice. So uh, to me, I think uh, I think the guy got uh, he got what he deserved, but uh, it took long enough. I think it took longer than what it actually needed to be done. Uh, so, uh, you know, that, it, and that's my opinion. And I said at the end of the day, that's what it's all going to be based off everybody's opinion on on certain situations. So uh, I believe he got what he, he deserved. I think it should be a little bit more extent than that. I mean, you, to me, truthfully, if, if you left everything up to me, uh, if you kill somebody, you deserve to be killed straight up that's how i feel feel you know you shoot somebody you kill somebody you deserve to be killed i don't give a fuck what situation it is you know you kill somebody you deserve to die too so uh that's uh that's my grunt mentality piece on that one that's what's up i re i, re I respect that 100 percent, and i get what you're saying where you don't keep up with it as much and it's so funny it's like you know I'm a big believer in you doing what you need to do for you and your family, but also a part of doing what you do for you and your family, you you have to know what's going on around you. And, and most of us have an opinion about things too, especially when we see injustices that come through. Even if, some, even if it's something as simple as the employees that work beneath you when they cheat in the Homes Depot system, and that ain't cool with you. But understanding that, like you said, justice needs to be served. It don't matter the color of a person's skin. You know what I'm saying? When justice is continuously served, I guess that's when we all, shit, I hope we begin to win. You know what I'm saying? Like, Spike for a Mafia, when we stood up together, when you was a Spike for, you felt like you had some small victories, especially if you was a senior E4. That's, that's why you had got to that point. You know what I'm saying? So everybody liked a little small win, but I respect that. Shooter, Shooter, so what you think, man? What did what did you think? Did you watch the trial? Did you hear about the trial? You know, you being out there in the ATL now and the things that goes on out there and a the few of the killings that happened out there. Um, what did you, what did you think? think? I didn't um I didn't too much relive what we all saw on national TV was basically a lynching of a man, you know, begging for his mama dying. So I didn't rewatch that you know, constantly, you know what I'm saying? I didn't even much watch the trial, you know what I'm saying? I just heard it on TV when they came up with the vertical or whatever because that type of shit like that puts me in a dark space, man. So, you know what I'm saying? So I don't I don't dig it up, you know what I'm saying? I just see the verdict, just tell me the verdict, and you know what I'm saying? Just hopefully that, you know, he'd have got charged with this, just hopefully they give him, you know, accurate amount of time you know what I'm saying? Because that's where the justice really go come here in America. You know what I'm saying? We ain't in Russia where, you know, we could serve, you know, real justice to this motherfucker. But, um, yeah, hope they give them give them some, you know, give them some a length amount of time, max them out on everything. You know, um, that's what we could hope for. But, yeah, you know, it's a it's a start, but it's it's a little bit too late, too, you know. At all these other little killings that went on and stuff, but it's it, but damn, I guess it's a start. You can say it's a start. See how it goes, and we're gonna see how it goes as far as um 
you know, I'm not against policing, but I'm against the bad Apple motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? I'm against, you know what I'm saying, police immortal to crimes that they commit. You know what I'm saying? I think they should be held to a higher standard than us. You know what I'm saying? As soldiers, we're held to a higher standard than civilians. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, y'all out there preaching the laws and pulling people over with the laws and all this. I think y'all should be held accountable for what you do, you know? That's just me, though. You know, I'm not against policing, but damn, clean this shit up, man. You know what I'm saying? All this shit of police could do what the fuck they want to do. All that shit need to be cleaned up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not against against the shit because we got to have police, you know. Or the world will just be crazy here. Everybody be out here getting wild. So, you know. But, yeah, we're going to see what, how much time they give them. And then, you know, we'll go from there. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's uh, that's 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 dope. That's that was something that was very interesting. That's that's happened since we've been since we've been gone. You know. What I'm saying? And one more thing, you know, um, I want to say this. Um, like you know, um, well, how can I put this? How have you been? This is this how I'm gonna put it. You know, black folks, we already go through enough with our own folks. You know what I'm saying? It's just that we just hope that the people that's supposed to be out here to protect us and, you know, getting pulled over, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I got my insurance license and all that shit don't end up with a bullet in your motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I know we got our yeah, own issues and shit, but damn, you know, y'all were the badge to protect and serve, you know, uh, you know, public servants, basically. Really, you know really what I'm saying? Talking. So, you know. But yeah, we could start off with that, man, and pass some laws for these cops could um think twice because if they know that they, you know, it's consequences to the shit, hey, you know. Maybe they'll think about pulling that trigger. But yeah, we'll see. I um give me a second. I'm kind of going back and forth with somebody on another page about having a problem seeing a video. If you having a problem seeing a stream, drop it down in the chat for me or share this live stream. I'm attempting to figure out what's going on. I'm not for sure if Whiskey Charlie, you have another laptop handy by you or you could check and see if we showing, but uh, I'm not sure. So I'm, I'm responding to, to, to Kip. Yeah, I can see it on my page as well. So I'm not really sure why you can't see it right now, but we there, we live, we live. We on the Grunt Speak page. We lie. We lie. Hey, we lie. We always we lie. lie. Go live, baby. Go live, baby. We always live. We always live. Hey, you guys. Hey, you got to uh look. So Why uh Big Sarge is over there uh trying to uh, connect in or try to get people connected in and everything else. Hey, uh, you know, just like uh, Big Sarge says earlier, is hey, we've been out for this uh for like two weeks, uh, and I'd like to hear from some of our uh, followers on what. Uh, what what kind of things they got into this uh, previous last two weeks, and what's something that uh, you've picked up from our, our previous shows uh, to uh, kind of learn from or uh, kind of to uh, follow through with? So uh, just uh, if you uh, just comment on there, just say uh, say something that you uh, that you were interested in, or say something that you're interested in us uh, talking about on these shows. Oh, look, big uh, killer wood done left us too. Look at him. He got a candle there. Look, he's got the romantic candlelight going on over there. <laughs> hey, don't mind me, you guys. I'm uh, <laughs> Alfueda. I'm Alfueda. If you understand Spanish, I'm outside, you guys. I'm doing I'm doing it a little different this time. Yeah, I still got the flag uh, behind me here. Just one minute. I, I really am. I'm, I'm multitasking on my phone and looking into this camera. I probably should just leave this phone alone. All right. All right. All right. I you. You have nothing to say about this subject. Okay, okay, okay. I completely understand that, sir. Give it time because we ain't really got into the subject all the way yet. We really just talking about, I got you. You ain't had nothing to say about the Chauvin subject. I got that. Not a problem. We haven't really got into the subject. About who? What you say? I, I I'm, I'm, reading, I'm reading some... Uh, Comment in the chat. And I was responding to a comment in the chat. They were saying they really didn't have anything to say about that subject. And I was thinking we haven't gotten to the subject. But they were talking about the 
the uh, Chauvin trial subject that I asked about. But a hey, hey, intermediate uh, little question here while we're waiting on everything to go through. Uh, name, uh, if you're watching this, uh, name one uh, weapon that you liked using while you were in the infantry. Name something that you liked uh, using, uh, whether it was uh, something you learned to use. Uh, I think I was a big fan of the uh, ITAS. I got to go to a class on that and uh, learn how to use it. Uh, but I think outside that, I would have to say the, uh, you know, throwing a fucking grenade, man, you know, explosion, the concussion from that thing. I think that was uh, pretty exciting. So I don't know about y'all. What about you, Killer Wolf? Oh, man. Hands down, the toe. Toe missile. You know what I'm saying? You shoot that motherfucker, follow it, you follow it, you know what I'm saying? You bring fucking buildings now. Why not the toe missile? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hold up in so many to nine. You know what I'm saying? That 25 motherfucking mic, Mike, for damn sure. You know what I'm saying? What else? I like the saw. Because that bitch yeah. get loose, you know what I'm saying? All that shit, the oh, two yeah. parties, I, I, all that shit, the grenade, hey, Mark all, 19. all the, the javelins, all that shit, man. Hey, 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 hey man, say, say something for me. I mean, God damn, kill the one, you gonna take every last weapon we got. <laughs> but how you how you tell the grunt to pick one? It's, 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 like, right, it's right. like me going through a sorted thing of Krispy Kreme donuts. I just can't pick just one. I got to try all of them out. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hold up a minute here. Let me go ahead and rub one out as we're talking here. <laughs> hey, uh, Tim over on the other side over here, he said he liked the M60 all day. Yeah, I like the pig too, man. When I was, when I was young and I got in in the basic, when I went to be a combat engineer, they had the pig out there, so the M60 was uh, that was pretty nice. But for me, I think it was the saw. It was definitely hands down the saw because as a young private, that was my first real heavy weapon. You know what I'm saying? Everybody had an M16. I was just like, everybody get that. The damn transportation guys get the M16 during those times. <laughs> you might have had a, a A2 and they had an A1. You might have had an A4. I ain't going to lie, man. One of my one of my best missions in basic when we were storming that hill and we was like, you know, I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. You know what I'm saying? I felt like such a motherfucking gladiator storming up that hill with motherfuckers up there, you know, shooting down the 240, you like running up that bitch. He, I'm up. Get out. Bye -bye. You got your homie right there. Hey, he rolling. Bye -bye -bye. You, you roll with him, man. I, I felt like a motherfucking gladiator doing that shit, bro. Yeah, that was what's up, man. Tim say the saw a piece of turd. It depends on what you're comparing the saw to. If you're comparing it to the M60, you probably can say that because the M60 was a little bit more durable. But for what you what you needed the saw to do, it was definitely functional, especially carrying it in Iraq modified with the collapsible buttstock. So I don't know. It just depends on what you was using it for. But I definitely take a saw, and I like that 242. I mean. Yeah, the, and the, then the, the coax. Like, but, but and, you know, I, I don't know. I think more. I like the the the, the flash bangs and, and going right into a room than I did the grenade. You know what I'm saying? Because I like the violence of action to keep going with the flash bang. But we ain't get too many opportunities of that. You had too many damn IEDs. You was attempting to survive, and you was returning fire from the 50 cal on top of your vehicle. And you got a little bit of, you know, close quarter combat. What you got? Yeah. One of the best rounds I love to use was the AP round on the brad, the armor piercing round. Because Hodge used to hide behind the motherfucking bricks and shit. You know what I'm saying? The, the AT is going to hit and blow up on contact. That AP just going to roll on through that bitch. So I was an AP shooter, man, all the way. You know, you know it's no hiding for me. I'm coming through whatever the fuck you behind, man. I loved it. My coax is set right there in the thing most of the time. We probably use that for little warning shots, some shit like that. But the coax, you know, we just had to keep that clean. We didn't use number 25 mic, Mike, this way, baby. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Dyke says uh, the 240 Bravo was a great replacement for the M60, but the older I got, the heavier that motherfucker got, that mf -er got. Especially on the 15 mile ruck march. Oh, yes, indeed. Because when you're a little dude like me or like you, sir, because you ain't too much bigger than me, and you up in a 240 Bravo on a ruck march, 
your thighs and your hamstrings and everything has a way to start to tighten up and your calves and everything. Maybe that's just me, your shoulders and your upper back muscles. Oh, yes, indeed. That 240 will make a man out of you or it can break you down, too. But it's definitely uh, it's definitely when you on a light movement, the weapon you want to be around is that 240 Bravo. Tim says the saw only came out because Congress was broke and it used the same ammo as M16. I can see that being 100% true, Tim, but I just know that the saw was introduced to me, you know, as a young infantryman. So I was just excited about it because it was a machine gun and it wasn't the M16. Hey, we, we talk about, you know, our guys um right now, you know, out of shape and shit like that. I'll take my old platoon over anybody right now because it's all about heart. You know what I'm saying? We had a couple guys out of shape, but when it came down for some shit, you know what I'm saying? Them the ones you want behind you. I'll take, I'll take my old platoon right now, drunk off the couch, go go back to our overseas with it, tap some shit now. That's how we roll, baby. Hey, but that that, that also goes to like, uh, hey, I'm pretty sure everybody will vouch upon their per, uh, their left and their right right now to this day and then uh, even prior to. There's not going to be a whole lot of uh, – People that's going to be out there. And now, you, you, everybody's going to have that one uh, dirt bag or one shit bag if they didn't like having a platoon or whatever else. But uh, I think everybody will vouch upon uh, who they have with them uh, currently at the moment. But uh, yeah, look, I look, I take uh, who I went overseas with every every day of my fucking life. I uh, had uh, had the pleasure of having Big Sarge with me over there, and uh, I would I would do that over and over again. I trusted that uh, trust Big Sarge with my with my life. Hey, it's like this, man. What's that fucking movie where they got all the? They was the best drilling crew they had. Hey, hey, what what, what I missed? What I missed? I'm I'm, I'm, I'm my bad, Killer Wolf. I said straight from the neck, whiskey, Charlie. I see you took that whole speech bottle to the face. That's (laughs) all. Hey, we better get off of here early tonight or it's going to be a rough one in about the next 30 to 45 minutes. <laughs> hey, you, are, you already know. It's speak, grunt. But anyhow, go ahead. What would you say, uh, Wolf? That's just like, um, what's the name of that movie? Armageddon. They got all the guys out there to save the motherfucking world. They probably was out there, you know, they had to pull them out of strip clubs. They was drunks and all that shit, but they came and saved the motherfucking world, man. So you can't judge a book by its cover, bro. So with that being said, hey, take it easy, sir. Nice. Uh, thanks for joining in. But with that being said, let's. I want to talk about playing catch up and really just catching up with what we've been doing in life for the last couple of weeks. And, you know, since we have been missing And first, I want to I want to say my apologies for not letting y'all know we is going to be gone. Why? Because I'm like that. I'm that emotional type of guy. I'll drop a video, not drop a video and feel like everybody would be cool. But when somebody's supporting you or somebody used to seeing what you do, it's admirable that you that you get them a heads up too, or you post older videos so they have something to keep being inspired by you. So thanks for rocking with us today. Thanks for coming back today, attempting to get things done more in a structural way. But just to, to catch up with what we've been doing, you know what I'm saying? Not only to look to inspire you by telling you what we do. And I want to start off with Killer Wolf because <laughs> That was the first week we really took off when we talked about the vow renewal and, and how all that went down. You know what I'm saying? So, Killer Wolf, let's let's let you have your time. I'll talk about some things that's on your mind, but let's talk about the vow renewal and what you've been up to, you know what I'm saying, since that. Oh, man, the vow renewal, man. It was everything that, you know, that I pictured it to be kind of kind of over the standard that we thought it was going to be on. Um, you know what I'm saying? I laid down some heavy words for my wife actually had me in the, I think, old Big Saw seeing old oh, Killer Wolf. Killer Wolf shed some tears, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't, I couldn't even get my words. I couldn't get my words out. Man, look, I couldn't get my words out. Man, look, I, man, look, I, words out. I seen that woman, come down, come down. man, come down there in that aisle with that dress on, man, like this my wife, man. So, you know what I'm saying? We turned up. It was a good time. Um, after that, we went to uh, Miami the following week, went down there with another couple, man, got a boat, 
we was out there a while and now just enjoying life, man. Um, getting back, getting back to the business. Um, you know, getting these shirts put off on um, Killer Wolf Fitness. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. got some yeah. got some things to tie up with it though. Um, my wife, she um looking through her um because people people was coming saying that they want wanted um shirts. So I was just gonna get like about two or three just to start off, you know, so I could promote it. But once I started seeing people saying like, "Hey, I want one, I want one," you know what I'm saying? So my wife. She got a lot of comments in her section with people that actually do like boat, you know what I'm saying? Do it like boat for the um, t shirt. So we waiting on that to come on through. And then I'm about to get these programs started for as um, if you want to get boat, um, big chest on um, day, um, arms, abs, at, um, legs, all that, man. I'm about to get it, get it popping, man. I getting this camera. You know what I'm saying? Getting the camera popping. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be getting put to work. So when you buy my program, you're gonna see what I do and see because I'd have put my body through trials and tribulations. I'd have failed and got back up and steady, you know, learned what not to do and what to do. You know what I'm saying? So the shit's guaranteed to work. All you gotta do is do what the hell I tell you to do and stay your big ass out the kitchen. If you if you in the <laughs> kitchen, stay the hell out the kitchen. Big wolf can't be there for you. In the kitchen, man. You know what I'm saying? But if you get you a good diet going and follow, follow my programs, hey man, sky's the limit, man. I know this shit go work. You know, I've been I've been training for like what? Shit, I don't know, man. What, what eight, eight years? You know what I'm saying? Actually getting serious uh, with this shit. Old so. Huh? How old are you? I'm 37. 37. 37. So you've been training about nine years. Well, yeah, well, yeah, you can say that, yeah, because no, real talk, you a lot. I know, I understand that because a lot of stuff that's in my program, um, I went through with the military, so I, I added some of that shit into it. So, you know, what I'm saying, just getting it documented and put out now, you know. So, we gonna change a lot of lives, man. You know, loving life. That's it. Too many people dying. You know, what I'm saying, too many people dying and I ain't living. You know, so enjoying my wife, you know, living life, man. That's it, baby. That's what's up. So, yeah, I mean, everything that I had written down that I wanted to ask you about that I wanted to touch on, Grunt, I guess we connected like that. You already spoke on because the first thing on my list talking about Wolf was uh, what was it like and how you felt at the vow renewal, the wedding, at the wedding. What was Miami? You went right into Miami. Then I was gonna ask you about the church. You said how I was saying how I felt that the vow renewal. You you was talking to me. You was like, "Hey, grunt, just calm down, man. Calm down." I felt like I was about to go into battle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it was good having you there, bro. Um, I needed that man that talk down. You know what I'm saying? Because hey, when you love a woman, man, that's how I come out, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, all my stuff, I wrote it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have to, um, you know, look up shit or none of that shit. All that shit came from here. So, yeah, man, love your woman, respect your woman. Women are the best in the world, baby. If you don't like them, go find your dude or something. You know, I ain't knocking y'all, but however y'all roll, that's how y'all roll, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's why I love you, man. That's that's a hey, all the way one hundred a thousand percent of the time. All the way one hundred a thousand percent of the time. Not only do you talk it, you walk it. I can vouch for it from the day that I met you. And me being older than you, I'm inspired by you. Nineteen forty-two. You got that old school vibe in you too, like you was born in forty-two. <laughs> So you know who we got up next, and we're going to see how me and him connect, because I wrote down a few things that I wanted to ask you about, too, since the, since the, since the people been been missing you, and we're going we to see how you come through, Whiskey Charlie, what, what, we got you, what we got for you if you catch up with us today. So what's been going on around your way, Charlie? Hey, uh, I say, uh, you know, uh, I kind of touched a little bit on the basis a little bit earlier, but uh comes to uh, uh, spending time with the family, uh, being at home. Uh, I went on a vacation technically uh, the last week that we uh, were on. And uh, I spent the last 11 days now. It's technically been almost three weeks. But uh, 
11 days when I went on vacation and uh, spent time on uh, improving, uh, improving my uh, house, uh, improving uh, our uh, living, uh, imp improving our security to my property. Uh, so that, I, I would say the big, biggest thing is, uh, you know, spending time with family and uh, improving my security. I put up a fence. I did it all with my, uh, of course, bare hands. Uh, that they had they had my bad, bro. How, how, how fucking big is your, um, your, your land, man? You, you look like you had to put in some work, bro. You had to put in some <laughs> motherfucking work. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, uh, that's what happens whenever, uh, it's, uh, you know, it comes down to, uh, I had, uh, I have about an acre of land, uh, right about an acre of land. So, uh, I had about 400 linear feet of fence to do and, uh, did it with all post hole diggers because I have too many, uh, roots, uh, in my yard to use an auger. If you try to hit an auger, then which is a machine that helps uh, dig the uh, post, if you try to hit uh, a root with an auger, it's going to give you a little toss or a little yank. So I felt like, you know what, I just go ahead and do it, uh, the, the old way and just do it with my hands. I can tell you this much. Uh, I felt uh, pretty shitty after the third day because my hands were pretty tender by touch. But outside that, uh, you know what? Uh, after after you get it all said and done with, man, hey, I, I enjoy my uh, privacy. I enjoy what I have. So uh, I think the biggest thing is uh, when you grow, when you get a little older, uh, you enjoy the smaller things in life. And having a fence, it's well worth the money, especially with the way the prices of lumber and everything else is up. Uh, besides that, uh, I definitely enjoy what I have because I don't have to worry about seeing anybody else. That's what I was about to ask you, man. Um, I know home prices are fucking skyrocketing right here in my neighborhood. They building right behind me. Um, basically kind of like the same houses, but the motherfucking houses that went up 40, you know, thousand or, you know what I'm saying? It's more because the lumber shortage. I guess from, um, the damn Amazon shit burnt, you know, all that shit burnt down and shit. So I guess that's the effect we get from that shit. Well, uh, what I've read on it, it's, it's, uh, it, uh, it was all came from a, a national shortage. Uh, when, of course, when COVID hit, a lot of people had a lot of, uh, personal time. Let's just say that, right. They had a lot of personal time. So everybody, I can tell you this much, uh, working at Home Depot, uh, we never slow down a, a, a damn day, never slow down. We never slow down a moment, uh, since COVID, of course, we restricted people and stuff like that, but, uh, and followed, uh, COVID regulations and stuff like that. But, uh, outside that we, we never slow down. I mean, we'd have people online. It looked like a black Friday every day, uh, having, you know, anywhere from hundred to 200 people in line at times, uh, coming in to buy lumber, come to buy stuff. And what happened was, is that, uh, that shortage came from the workers that were actually work at the mills. Uh, they didn't have enough people there to work. Uh, and with that being said, they didn't have enough people there working. Uh, they didn't have enough people there cutting and to, uh, so, to mill the wood and stuff like that. Yeah, so, so, you know, it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of people moving here to the South now because COVID like say in New York, you was in the goddamn, Based on them prison cells, they call apartments the concrete walls and shit. So now people are moving down south where they can get more for their money. Say if we locked in the house again, you know what I'm saying? We could all be comfortable, you know what I'm saying? But damn, hey, y'all can't keep coming down here down south, man. Y'all got to keep that up north and stuff, man. We got to have some room down here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, that's, that, they're coming from everywhere. They ain't just coming from New York. They come from everywhere, but they, they realize that, uh, and uh, only Texas people understand this, but uh, Texas is the greatest country in the world. And uh, once you come, you come down, down here, you're but right. shit, Texas turning into the, the state that y'all hate, California. Uh, nah, nah, nah. The prices, yeah. Nah. nah. I'm telling you, man. Man, we ain't turning to California. Ask my brother that here in Austin. Austin oh, that's Austin. Austin. California, mate. Well, Austin, well, Austin is. is. I'm Not telling everybody you, understands that. Texas is turning to California, man. I'm telling y'all. Austin is turning into California. Austin is. Not the rest of Texas. Texas, Texas. hey, look, California can't even have guns, bro. Hey, hey Texas, Texas is legalized. Shit, legalized. shit um, what is it? Um, Houston, all that shit high now. Nah. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. Yeah. Look, look, I got I, family I, living we, in Houston. We know people in Houston, man. I just can't get out of here, man. I, I got here, down there, man. I, I just love <laughs> down there. It ain't that high, man. Look, Texas is too big to get that high, man. 
Texas is bigger than California. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Hey, by a little bit, huh? By a little bit, though. <laughs> California big is a motherfucker. Hey, fuck hey, California. California. They, they talk about putting that motherfucker, uh, what, what they say, South separating South California and uh, what is it, North California, some shit like that. They talk about separating that motherfucker. It ain't gonna matter. It still ain't as big as Texas. We're, we're about to trade California for Japan, is what we're about to do. I'm about to do a draft pick right now. <laughs> but hey, I, oh, I'd have heard on Texas. Hey, a good thing. I heard that Texas are talking about legalizing on uh, marijuana for veterans with PTSD. I, I had seen that too when I came down. That's a good thing. It's already, it's, already it's just not known. Uh, oh, um, come on, Tim. Tim, Tim, Tim over here talking stuff. Tim, get out of here. Come on now. You got to come back to Texas. I met a major who was telling me that. Matter of fact, when I was out there doing Lyft at Uber, I picked him up, and he was actually going to get his, his, his pickup. He was going to get his ounce, him and his homeboy. And he had told me then, this was back in 2018, 2019, he had told me then that, as a Texas veteran that you could get it. You just had to be like 100% disabled and some other things. He gave me his information. I just never checked into it. So, yeah, that might be uh, a big thing, something that's coming out for everybody to know. Yeah, buddy. But, oh, yeah, I got on. Um, damn. Well, me and my uncle, we planning a guy's trip to motherfucking um, Miami, man, coming – Let's see, in June, I'm going back to Miami with my uncle. My, you met my uncle, the one that was in the wedding. Mm -hmm. Bob Renew, I mean. But, yeah, we we doing a guy's trip, man. We about, about to get down and turn up, baby. Hey, I'm not one of those, like, hey, look, we we, we, got, we two different type of guys here, even though we're both infantry. Hey, look, hey, look, if I can choose a place to go, I would never go to California, first of all. Never go to California. I never go to Miami. First, second of all, Why? never go to either one of those places. Why? I'd rather go to deep in the woods. Find me a cabin on a fucking on a lake where it's nice and secluded. Nobody around. Give me a fishing pole, and give me my wife and kids with the right. you know. Give me a boat, and that's what I want right there. Have you ever been to Miami? No, don't care to go. What do you know about it? Uh, it's got water and uh, it's got a whole bunch of fine ass bitches there. I don't need to go there. Oh, so are you? I, I need to still be married. I need to still be married. Yeah. Fine -ass women? <laughs> what, what is the problem? The women or the water? I the think water he said is, it. Got, I think he already. Business. I think he already said it. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. But on a serious note, man, like I, I don't. Uh, I'm not a big beach guy. That, that's, that's what it is, bro. Like I'm not a big beach guy. I, I'm more of a hey. If, if I'm gonna enjoy myself on water, I want it to be uh, secluded. Uh, I want to be able to uh, enjoy myself. I don't feel like I'd be able to enjoy myself as much as as quietness. I, even though I'm a vocal person, anybody that knows me knows, knows that I'm loud. I'm I'm outgoing. I can talk to anybody. Everybody. <laughs> I can I, I can tell you this much that if, if it was if choice wise, I'd like to be. And, and, and hell, I'd like to go to Alaska. That's where I'd like to go. If I, if I can go a place, I can choose a place to go to and I can afford it, bro, I'd go to Alaska. Nice and quiet. Check, check this oh. out. Let me, let me jump into the comments. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, there you go. So, Tim, Tim said he rode a motorcycle through Texas. That's that, Texas is a 24 hour travel from east to west, and he did it on the motorcycle. Yeah, big big ups to you, Tim. That must have been about the time y'all were talking about the greatest states between Texas and California and all this other madness. But greatest anyway, country compared to greatest state. Texas is not a country, and it cannot succeed from the union. And if it hey, does, so it becomes Ricardo Mexico again. Did you take take Did you take Texas history? Hey, look, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> don't give a shit, did you bro. Take Texas history, Texas government. No, I didn't. All right, well, then, just leave it alone. 
<laughs> you from Virginia, <laughs> buddy. You, you can't you can't turn on your people like that, bro. Hey, hey, fuck that. that. Fuck that. Look, okay, look. Yeah, my hometown is up that way. I'm from Virginia West. By God, Virginia, whatever you want to call it. Hey, look. I, I I claim Texas. I claim Texas. I I love everything about Texas. I I enjoy the laws. You go to any other state with their laws, they don't got as much freedom as fucking Texas does. That's why whenever people ask me like, "Hey, you always wear either uh, USA the American flag or you wearing Texas?" I say I wear the Texas flag because if if America ain't gonna do right, fucking Texas will. I ain't saying I have a problem with Texas. All I'm saying is Texas is not able to succeed from the union. They're not a country anymore. They're not going to ever be a country again. So just let it go. That's not true. Okay. That's not they, have, they actually had a team up with um who they took that shit from Mexico. Did they? They probably be all right. Did. But uh, yeah, they have a team up with Mexico to get it done. So all right, no going back, with that. Going back in these comments, no going back in these comments. Um, let's see. Tim also said the wildest part of that it took two days to get through, but uh, he had great barbecue along the trip. Kimmy said he going to Miami is rich and sexy. Yeah, I'm going to Miami. <laughs> Turn up. I can see Kimmy like the white Scott Storch. Without the cocaine, now nah, maybe with the cocaine, extra cocaine, water for style. Now nah, I'm just messing with him, but yeah, I can see Kimmy doing the Miami. He might have the corn rolls like vanilla ice or something like that. Ain't no telling. Uh, Tim said you missing out, man. You need to do the Miami. I still haven't done Miami myself. I guess I'm gonna have to check it out and see what the nightlife is like. Hey, 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 hey. Me and my girl, we we planning some shit too. We got another couple. We bought the on, you know, the tall guy that came to my bar renewal. Him and his wife. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we're doing on uh, what is it? Um, I'm thinking. Um, I think we decided on Cabo. Going back to Cabo. So, um, yeah, man, that's my spot. I probably stay at something different though. But Cabo, man, is beautiful, bro. It's beautiful. I, I like Cabo better than I like Jamaica. I'm telling yeah, you, man, it, it was number love out there, bro. Number love, bro. Mm -hmm. I, that out. I haven't done Cabo, but okay. So uh, Tim said you're missing out on Miami. Tim said from Savannah, Hato, Las Vegas. Okay. I'll clear that one up for me. I'm not a gambler, though. I can't go. I'll, I'll, well, I, I can only enjoy myself in Vegas if I'm at a bomb-ass um, hotel where they do pool parties. You know what I'm saying? I can be at the pool party, but I'm not a gambler. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a gambler. Okay, so Gabe Jones say, depends on time of the year. I go to Miami in February and Alaska in August. Not vice versa, though. Yeah, I haven't done Alaska yet. Me and that's something me and the wife talk about as well. Doing an Alaskan cruise, I want to go out there and check it out. I heard they got the cabin where you can stay and, and, and catch the salmon fresh off the lake, and the bears come up and pick it off the grill. Like I want to check that out. Being that part of nature, though. Oh, oh so hey, bro, we are. Um, me and my wife, we'll think about doing something different this Christmas. Um. Get a couple people put in, get a cabin out in Colorado. Oh, oh. Step like Colorado the same is shit. Legit. Yeah, I, would, I can vouch on that one, man. I now love Colorado. Go. First thing that came to my mind was like that Tyler Perry type shit. The Tyler Perry movie where all the couples went together and shit. I ain't seen it gonna be no falling out, but that's what you think of because it's not too many. I don't know too many blacks doing that. Let me just say that. I don't know about whites. I don't know about Hispanics. I don't know too many black couples getting together and going out of town. Maybe they need to spend my whole life and start it now. That, we got to change it up. We got to change the narrative, man. We got to change it up. Yeah, yeah. What's, up? what's up? All right, I'm coming. And hope, yeah, and come on, Whiskey Charlie. That's up your alley, baby. We need, we, need, we need somebody out there to know them snow mountains and shit, man. But look. <laughs> We, we shouldn't have that problem anyway because hopefully everybody got their shit together so we shouldn't be like Tyler Perry and them, you know, people getting hit with wine bottles, motherfuckers up there getting shots from BD and no, shit. No, 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 <laughs> I don't think no gonna I ain't talking about like, I wasn't talking about that part at all, so it might not have been a good analogy. It was just the analogy of the fact of 
you know, uh, African American couples, just couples together like that. Period. My homeboys from the D wasn't getting together and like really couple dating and going on trips. I don't know too many people that was doing that. The first thing that came to my mind was like the Tyler Perry movie where all those couple was together. Or, you know, you think of the movie Couples Retreat where they go to the swinger side, you know, the teen side, you know what I'm saying? The young side. So, man. Excuse That's me. a fun oh, ass that's movie, bro. Thinking. That's a fun ass movie, man. What's that boy night, Vince Vaughn? <laughs> when he about to whoop the shit out that yoga instructor because he was all his wife and shit. That shit was funny, man. <laughs> oh, boy, I told him, man, I ain't got no draws on. I can't do that, man. I ain't got no draws on. <laughs> My homeboy used to uh, always use that. Smith say, Kippy say, Smith, I was born in Flint. I'm blacker than you. Yeah, right. You wish. <laughs> <laughs> wish. Oh, shit. Get out All of right. here. So anyhow, we were talking about catching up. Whiskey Charlie, you talked about, you know, Home Depot and everything. Let me ask you a question, Whiskey Charlie. I think I seen you post something about a missing employee from Home Depot. Was that from your store? Yeah, yeah, it uh, actually happened here recently. Uh, starting, uh, it's one of my uh, good uh, good associates that I've worked with uh, from my overnight experience. I, I've worked with him for uh, probably last past two, three years. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, uh, it's it's kind of crazy seeing that uh, someone that you know uh, pop up missing. Uh, last time I seen him was uh, last Monday, and uh, he was uh, in around our store, and then he ended up. Uh, leaving for the night and uh you know there's a lot more information into that situation but uh a lot of things i can't uh put out there yeah. uh publicly but uh all i can say is that uh, he's a good guy man uh i wouldn't uh it's like uh it's, it's uh, whenever you're at work right you always you always find some similar people like you uh and also like battles you know right if you didn't serve in the military but uh, i felt like he was he was a battle to me and uh so uh, it's a big concern to me uh, with somebody that that uh, in in the situation that he's in and the situation that he's been in, whatever else. But uh, he's uh, uh, a great employee. Uh, I mean, I, I really don't know what all to say on, on that situation. But uh, all I can say is that uh, he, he's a brother. He's a friend. Uh, I'm hoping everything is all right. I mean, prayers to him and his family. His family came in and said that he was missing officially, uh, and has her filed a police report and stuff like that. But uh, and then if you if you go and look at the news, uh, if you're anywhere outside of Texas, you go look at the news right now. They they just found 90 people in Houston, 90 people in Houston that was kidnapped. And the craziest thing thing to me on this situation is every single person was above the age of 20. And not only that, it was only five females, only five females. So you're telling me that there was 80 something males that could not control the situation on what was going on in a single house. And the neighbors didn't even report it. It was somebody else that reported the situation. So what, what the, the fuck? 90 people in one house, bro? Bro. That's crazy. Like, how could you not hear a voice? How could somebody not yell and scream? Like, what situation? Like, to me, it's like, it is astounding to me, like, of all those circumstances. Like, I I'm really big into watching all these crime pay, uh, crime uh, mood shows and everything else. I'm just like, how in the fuck do you not make a noise? Like, like nine people. They, people they, they had to be, they had to be um, illegals, right? They didn't, they say, didn't that. say that. They had to be because... I just can't see like non illegals, you know what I'm saying, that's Even been kidnapped or shows. whatever. Yeah, it has to be something to that point. You know, they don't want to be discovered. Yeah. You know well, what I'm saying? Because no, no, no. 90 people in one house, bro, that's yeah, crazy, yeah. man. Well, you got to think about it this way. This is what I was looking at, too. Like, how many people was in that house actually containing all those people, right? And then for them to roll up in a house and not find a single person that's holding those people captive? Like, come on, man. There's some serious shit going on there, bro. Like that that that's a real fucking mind fucker right there. Like, get the fuck out of here with that shit, man. So they ain't got nobody to connect that shit to. Not right at the moment. To tell you the truth, it had to be illegals and they were just harboring at that house. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the news flipped it or whatever, but I think that's what it was. 
But there had to be some kids, though. I mean, the 90, like, every time you see somebody bring up the fact of that, there had to be some youth there. But there wasn't 20 years of age, like 20 years of age. They said they were, uh, they hadn't been fed in two to three weeks and stuff like that. Now, I understand you, I understand exactly what you're saying, Wolf, Killer Wolf, because that's the same thing I thought. But at the same time, 20 some, 90 something people, and they nobody can make a fucking sound. Like, what was going on in that fucking house, bro? One person cannot contain 90 people. I can let you know that. Not one. If they if they starve them and shit like that, they already weak as fuck. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They can they can have like a five man team with weapons that control that motherfucker. Maybe they just didn't catch him. Fear, fear is a hell of a motivator, man. You have to think. We were in Iraq. You know what I'm saying? We've seen things and we've done things that that some people would feel uncomfortable with. But we've probably seen more things that was done by the enemy to their own people that you you would think like, how how could you not want to help us? How could you not want to tell us what's going on? Because we're really here to help you. But that fear that they had placed in them, man, fear can control a, a multitude of people. Unfortunately, you have to go back to the Holocaust. I mean, fortunately, fear is still in a lot of people's mind that other people tell you what you can and cannot do. That's all we talk about on this show. What we have the ability to do, but people be afraid to do something different. So if you're someone who <clears throat> has never lived in America, but you had the opportunity to see America on TV for what we portray America to be. This, this great place with equal opportunity where everybody has the opportunity to go get it, which, which to a certain degree you do, but let's just be real. There is a ton of racial injustice and there is a ton of economic injustice that goes on on both sides of the fence. But when you in Iraq, when you in Kuwait, when you in, and maybe not all of Africa, maybe some parts of Africa, maybe some parts of Europe and, 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 and former Soviet countries, you know what I'm saying? When you see America, you see opportunity and freedom. So if somebody telling you, yo, give me $500, I'll get you to America and you can be whatever you want to be, you're going to take that chance. So you're going to follow whatever somebody tell you to do because you you just looking to get to a place that you think is better than where you at. And if I'm beating you, if I'm threatening to kill your family, what you what you used to being around, then, then hell yeah, one person can rule 90 people. It, it, it takes a lot. Like you think about oh, seven people. Shit. Like you got you got one person um that was ruling the whole fucking nation. Um, you know, Hitler and shit back then. You know what I'm saying? It take one. One motherfucker, man, to actually take an effect and just, you know, get to spitting some bad shit out there and just rule the whole fucking land. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, you know, that, that shit is wild, though. Nine and man. one house, bro. That's wild. Yeah. I, um, I had never heard about it because I selfishly don't keep up with the news. Excuse me. And what's been going on with it. But I know I will keep up and pay more attention to it. But that's crazy, man. Like we often say the situation we wouldn't find ourselves in what we would not do. And it's only because we've seen a different side of life. We've been presented with a different thing. We have a different understanding living in the country that we live in. And, well, and that's where it comes to every everybody's has a different opinion on on such situ certain situations, right? So that comes to like who's going to react to the situation in different ways. I see uh, constant responses. Well, I, well, I would have done certain situ uh, certain things this way if I was a police officer. I would have done. You never know what you're going to do. Like I remember, I forgot who who exactly was when I was going overseas. I remember us being on a fucking plane. And I'm I'm sitting here, me and a couple of other battles. The first time going overseas, going over there and saying, "Oh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that." You don't know what the fuck you're gonna do. Well, I remember I can't remember what sergeant it was, but one of them told us, "There's there's two or three things you're gonna fucking do when you first get shot at. You're gonna shit, you're gonna piss yourself, or you're gonna fucking recover, uh, get to cover and start firing back." Right? Every every person's gonna be different on what the situation uh, on on certain circumstances. Right? That's the same thing with any. 
any person that's doing anything in, uh, wrong in, in situations in America, like if, if you're fucking selling drugs and shit like that, different drug dealers going to do things different ways. Different different police officers going to do different, different things in different ways. They're like, oh, well, police, uh, police officers are doing this, that, and the other. Not all police officers are going to do that. Look, I got battles that are police officers, and I've got uh, friends that are – I got families, police officers. Not all are going to react to the same way, right? And we and, and I think what it is is uh, the news media reacts to everybody being the same person, right? That, and that's not just police officers. That's just with I- individuals being out there, right? Drug dealers, everywhere else, and, and uh, however uh, situations are. But to me, it's like, look, you got to judge that individual on their their – their actions. Yeah, I, you, you're not gonna judge me on fucking killer wolf's actions. You're not gonna judge me on big Sarge's actions because I'm different. I, I not just because I'm white, but you're gonna judge me different because of the fact that I'm a different fucking person. Because I, I in my heart, I, I feel everybody's equal. Everybody's the same. You know, don't judge me because, because everybody, everybody else is fucked up. up. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, Mr. Charlie. Um, like I said, man, it's basically um. Like, especially with police officers, man, I think some a lot of them want to do the right thing, but it seems like they get their ass drug, drug through the mud for trying to police up this bad apple or whatever, you know what I'm saying? that That's one thing that needs to change, man. You know, ain't nothing wrong with policing, but yeah, well, the, yeah. way, the way that shit been going and, you know what I'm saying, it, it, you know, they got to put some, put some laws in place on oh, them. I think once they put some laws in place, a lot of shit will change. You know, well, yeah, um, they gotta be held accountable for their actions, actions, like you were saying earlier. Like you were saying earlier, that man, people gotta be held uh, held accountable for your actions. Everybody gotta be held uh, held accountable for their actions. Don't give a fuck anymore. Because hey, shit, if I if I sit out here and say, hey, um, this guy here fucking, I don't know, gave a fake twenty dollar bill to the dollar store. And I catch him outside and I hold him down with a knee to his neck the whole time till he die. I'm taking my ass to jail. They're going to take my ass to jail. So it should be the same motherfucking shit, man. Oh, yeah. No, that, that's, that's But, yeah, sure. um, shit. What else we were talking about on this motherfucker, man? <laughs> well, I don't know what the hell Big hey, Sarge hey. been doing. Big Sarge might be out. <laughs> He's rubbing on out. He might got to get, get a little shot or something, man. I don't know nah, what he got, man. Big Sarge rubbing on out. There he is. Look at him. He came back. He finished it. They finished rubbing it out. No, I wasn't rubbing it out. Is that the green, green apple? apple? Is that the green apple or the original one? Chris, Chris. Uh, okay. I did have the green apple when I was in Dallas. <laughs> I came across it. Um, So we were talking about just playing catch up, man. Y'all had told us what's been going on the last couple weeks for y'all. We talked about Chauvin trial, and we just talked about a little bit of everything in life and um, Vegas and Miami and visiting places for them. What we we do, so now oh he get he 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 going live tonight, boy. He 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 putting something on Facebook live tonight. Whiskey Charlie, man, he cutting up. <laughs> all jokes aside, you guys are great. Much love, and I wish you all the best. We appreciate that. So I wanted to give y'all a little catch up with me, man. What I've been up to, what I had going on, man. So I, no posted, big I think I posted some background, or maybe I did not. But uh, the day before we did the, the vow renewal, I had a photo shoot. So that went pretty dope. I did a photo shoot for the business, for the brand took that photo shoot and then took my inspirational cards. You know, my inspirational cards, I used to hit your, your windshield with. I, <laughs> I pass out. So I took all my inspirational quotes. Hey, beauty. I took all my inspirational quotes and uh, we put them on graphics with my, my pictures for my photo shoot. So we're going to start launching that for my page. I got that done. And then I had to come up with like 52 quotes for my own quotes to to do this for the entire year. So got that knocked out. Then after um, we did Shooter's Wedding, we did a couple days in Galveston, and that was a good time. Got to hang out and just just relax and take a step back. And then I was just in Dallas the earlier part of the week, you know, catching up with one of my old, my old homeboys, King, talking about some business stuff and really just 
getting a chance to see see life in a different way and remind myself of what I'm here and what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, and and my responsibility and the role that I play and you know what I'm saying in my life and just just remembering even as 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 men, you know what I'm saying, what we call to do the people that I influence. So like the last two weeks, life has been good. I started rucking again after being taking a break. You know what I'm saying? Taking taking a break from. Hold on, somebody at my door at nine o'clock at night. Oh, my wife said that. Get the heat. Get the heat. Get the heat. Get the let's heat. go. Let's go. Hey, let hey, big charge. Let's go. Let's do this. Hey, hey, I'm on the next plane. I'm on the next plane, man. I'm on the next plane. Yo, I went, I, I went from just being in that moment, telling what was going on, to it was on, bro. <laughs> Yo, hello. <laughs> Who had to know this late? My wife must have seen it, but you know, man, God has been good. I, I ain't gonna even lie to you for whatever y'all call it for yourself, man. God has been good for me. The universe has been good to me. And I'm grateful, man. Like I got, I got a couple of new clients with my coaching stuff. I got people who believe in my movement who working with me. Man, God has been good, yo. So I'm just really looking forward to the next level. I'm looking forward to what we do at Grunt Speak. I had somebody actually reach out to me. Shout out to Grunt Speak. Grunt Speak. Grunt. My bad. I had somebody reach out to me. Shout out to Dewan. Who wanted to, you know, do whatever he could to work with us to help us to get this message across and use his talents and his gift as well. You know what I'm saying? So, and he gave some ideas like Whiskey Charlie asked the last two weeks ago for the show. So it's it's pretty dope, man. So yes, just to catch up to what's been going on the last couple of weeks, things have been good for me. It's good that my homies remind me to speak because it's speak grunt, not grunt speak. But well, man, you gotta speak about what you're doing that remind yourself that what makes you so unique. But anybody been watching the NFL draft? I'm sorry to get you excited there, Killer Wolf. So that's, oh, oh, oh. oh my. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm happy that I got this webcam right here. So when I'm looking into the webcam, attention to attempting to get more comfortable looking in the camera, I can't see the madness that Whiskey Charlie is doing because the camera is a little bit off of my head. That's why you're so focused. So I, I, I'll be, I, when you see me doing this, just know, just know he wilding out. When you see me do this, just know he wilding out, man. Yeah, I'll be attempting to use my peripheral. I'll be cutting my eye over there with my glasses on to see what's going on. But you may be watching the sectors of fire, there, big sarge. Oh, uh, yeah, but I don't, some sectors I don't even want to see. I know somebody else got that covered over there. Killer Wolf got it, like he said. He raised his glass. I know, I know what to look for. But yeah, man. So things have. Uh, Things have been going good. You know what I'm saying? It's always important to celebrate where you at. Not hey. not not harp on where you used to be, not get too bent on where you think you are going, because life always throws you a curveball. But if you're busy celebrating where you at and you're grateful for what you have, then what you want comes easily. And what you didn't get or what you didn't have, you it's just like you miss your whole yourself with that whole thing. It ain't even nothing you focus on. It's like being out there in sector, you know what I'm saying? Shit. If you hey. miss if you miss a hundred IEDs, you ain't thinking about it because you ain't know. But that one that hit you, it makes you pay a little bit more attention to what's going on around you. Hey, it's all about uh when you go back to the military days. Hey man, it's about adapting and overcoming. But yeah, from each one of our stories, if you if you just listen, we all experience different things through our uh, our life and, and and the people that was listening to us. Y'all are experiencing different things, and hey, some people are more trouble. Uh, have more opportunity. I wouldn't say troubles because more opportunities, right? But uh, at the end, you guys, there's always a brighter side, and that's the way you gotta look at situations. Hey, man, hey, when it comes to women, uh, big Sarge out there renewing his thing. Hey, uh, no, big Sarge, kill wolf out there renewing his uh his vows and stuff like that, and. Uh, you know, big uh, big Sarge out there uh, doing his, doing his thing to get his uh, business up and running, and uh, of course me out here uh, just you know just living life. Dude, you cannot uh, 
it, it's all based upon your, your perspective, right? And all based off on your what you want to believe and what you have, right? I I would never accept anything less than everything's going all right. Hey, the good Lord to me, good Lord to me. And Big Sarge always says it, you know, hey, whether you believe in Buddha, whatever, whatever you believe in, hey, man, hey, life is good. And it's all how you all how you take it, man. You got to just ride the wave. You got to ride the wave, you guys. Hey, I don't want fucking surf, but hey, I'm riding the fuck. I'm riding the wave, man. I'm enjoying life. I'm enjoying life. If, if, if it's something quote unquote negative, hey, it ain't negative, man. It's a positive. Some somewhere along that fucking way, I'm gonna catch. Here, yeah, boom, right there, right. But I'm gonna catch that way. Whether I'm gonna fall off, I'm gonna I'm gonna catch my grip and I'm gonna ride that shit out. You know what? Because there's no negative. There's no negative in your life. No negative. Because if you're accepting negative, man, then you're accepting defeat. And as, as infantrymen, we never accept defeat. Whether you're the first man, last man, we coming out, we coming out big. Now it's all quiet. <laughs> hey, man. Over there sipping. Hey, man. Big Sarge over there sipping. Hey, fuck man, it. Hold dude. on. Yeah, I'm, I'm cracking it open. I, I thought, I, I honestly thought, I'm going to be honest, I thought Killer Wolf was going to come with something, so I wasn't prepared, I wasn't ready. But soon that's what I she said. Quiet, that's what she said. Hey, whatever. She wasn't ready. Long she wasn't ready. Long as she got it, you know it was good because Big Sarge showed up in the neighborhood. Kick in the door. Hey, it's, 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 it's the same shit Whisker Charlie saying, man. Um, you know, right now, um, some veterans they have it different. For as um, you got a lot of our brothers right now, you know, in the military going through divorces, um, stuff like that. So right now they probably can't see the the happier side of where some right of us are at right now, you know. Um, but hey, you know, most of us on here have been through it. You know, what I'm saying we'd have been through most of a lot of stuff that you guys are going through or whatever. But we just want y'all to know, man. Um, when you go through that. Just know that's not the end, you know. Um, it's always a better side, you know what I'm saying? Learn from it, learn from your mistakes, learn from the mud ducks you choose when you begin and they you know be cheating on you, all that other bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Get over that bullshit. Bruh, fuck yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hold on, bro. Yeah, there you go. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bruh, Killer Wolf did you just say learn from the mud ducks you choose, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of, lot of us chose some mud ducks before we got with the <laughs> mud ducks. Oh, no, what the fuck is that? I believe. 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 Somebody explain me that situation. That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. Come on, kill him. Okay, here we go. A mud duck is a motherfucking um, skank-ass motherfucker that's on the flip-flop and wish-wash. That, you know, a lot of us, the men at clubs, you know what I'm saying? We drunk in a motherfucker, um, been doing beer, keg stands, and then next time you know, you in the military, hey, Let's get married next day. You know what I'm saying? Then you find out this motherfucker running off on you. The whole guy BD, all kinds of other bullshit. <laughs> them the mud ducks, man. Them old dusty feet motherfuckers that got <laughs> crust, crust on the back of their feet that look like motherfucking Krispy Kreme donuts on a blade. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm hey, talking hey. about? Them the mud ducks, man. Hey, oh, Kel Wolf, what the hey, fuck? Man. Like, Kel, hey, whoa, 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 Krispy Kreme, you always talking about how good it is on your page, dog. <laughs> I think you're going to come in here and throw that in with fucking mud ducks, dog. Like, can't be hey, correlating nice. Well, But when I, when I say I'm Krispy Kreme fresh, I'm Krispy Kreme fresh for when you crack that box open and, yeah, you smell that freshness coming off that bitch. But when I Baby, say man, watch out those watch mud ducks, ducks. now nah, the, the mud ducks, they got Krispy Kreme on their feet. <laughs> but it's a different type because it's the um it's the glaze, you know what I'm saying? It ain't supposed to be on your feet like that. You know, like say you break the donut and the crust come out. That's what the mud ducks got on their heels, man. You gotta know how to 
Maybe you know, some yeah, lose ever shit. Right we right call them mud duck. Oh, uh, see, I ain't never, I ain't never heard of mud ducks, but I did when I was in basic training as a combat engineer. You have to do a show about the mud ducks, man. I'm gonna have to write some shit down for you. I got some more shit on them too. Yeah, we went, we went to the gentlemen's club. We call it that. We went to the gentlemen's club when I was in basic training, and we went to a place called Mud Puppies. And let me <laughs> tell you, bro, it was mud. It, yeah, <laughs> it was backwoods. It was backwoods, Missouri, and it was muddy. Let's just say that it was it was not the best. But you know, like, like you tell them, them, mud ducks. Ducks. you can't judge these women off these mud ducks, man. There's good women out there, man. There's good oh, yeah. women out there, so. You know what I'm saying? I met mine in the military. She held me down. You know what I'm saying? My wife right now for what, 15 years, 14 years. So, you know, hey, it depends, man. Don't don't get caught up in emotional, especially if you're in your 20s. Bro, it's life to live, man. You go fuck up. You want to do that in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because when you get like me, I'm, what, 37 now. I got a couple goddamn gray halves, but goddamn, I'm still killer wolf. You know what hey, I'm talking about? Kill a wolf. Goddamn right. See, but I mean, you, know, guys, you got life to live, man. Keep pushing, baby. Hey, look, I'm gonna pick it back off of Killer Wolf over here, and I know Big Sarge is gonna pick it back off us at the same situation. But look, you guys, look, uh, I that, you, you can fall in love at an instant moment, right? But at the same time, look, uh, I know Killer Wolf and Big Sarge will, uh, come back on me on with this, but uh, look, uh. The ch the ch most challenging women are the most interesting women. You no, know, I never thought my wife would be my wife. I thought it was another another woman, right? But uh, my wife challenged me. I met her off of look, and and look, I, I challenge Killer Wolf and Big Sarge on this one. After after I say what I got to say, I met my wife of pl off of plentyoffish.com. A website. No, a, a whole lot of people don't meet people off website. Like, but wait, look, you look. bullshitting like a motherfucker. Bro. I've been seeing that shit on Facebook, <laughs> and they've been yeah. like, "Hey, man, there's plenty of fish," but they'll make like <laughs> little memes out of it. I thought that shit was a joke. <laughs> so we got Whiskey Charlie on motherfucking speak run. Man, this mother's wife on plenty of fish, baby. That goes yeah. to show you, man. Hey, love, love highs, highs deep and deep places, no, no, man. You gotta go we, look we, for. It. Go look we for. Covered it. Our, we covered our realms then. Just, just like we in every every generation. Whiskey Charlie, uh, you are 30, 30 something, right? 32. So you was born in late 80s, you know, late 80s. 88. 88. Well, yeah, you was 88. You know what I'm saying? Wolf is early 80. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm late 70s. We cover in all generations just about Whiskey Charlie rocking close to the 90s. What I mean by that is I'm old-fashioned in the sense of me and my love, my life, my wife, Kiki, she come from high school with me. You know what I'm saying? Shooter, he, he what's the name? He found love in the club, like like Usher. You know what I'm saying? He found love up in the club. Whiskey Charlie proved catfish wrong, and he found his chick on what's the name? On Tinder Hot Fish. And they said, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, let me let me tell you, man. Look, my girl bust me out of the bar renewal. I was full of fucking um. They got hundred proof gin. It just came out when I got back from overseas. I think the shit kind of blackish. Or uh, the bottle might be black, some shit. But I was on that shit. I I I, I seen a walk by, I'm like, oh hell no, nah. let me let me go get this little honey bun right quick. You know what I'm saying? See what I got in this bit. Pull the hand. I like. Oh, yeah, she did hit you with it too. I like you look like wife material. You know she did. Yeah. She yeah. yanked from. Me. I was like, oh, all the homies laughed. That been everything. But guess what? She was waiting outside. I hit her with that forehead kiss. I tell y'all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> y'all be bullshit. Y'all be bullshit. I hit her, hit her with the forehead hey, kiss. Oh, really? 
You got to it got to be Bro, it got it got to be kind of cold. It don't get cold like that in Texas, but you got you got to pick the perfect day. You got to be kind of cold maybe around fall. The motherfucking all um, the leaves on the trees got to be turning like orange or some shit. And you do that shit, you going to get your wife, man. Hey, hey look, look. take from what to know, man. Look, hey, you know, bitch. Oh, right, look. Hey, yo, I, I didn't get my wife in October in Michigan. That is fall season, so <laughs> that is what we got together. But, hey, big sorry to look, look out. here. I, I, I met my wife while we're overseas. Yeah, on plenty of fish, right? <laughs> I got back from overseas. Never thought I would talk to her again because. She on there liking liking my pictures, liking my page and stuff like that. Facebook. And when I got back over, you know, back at that back at that time, back in uh, er, uh, of course later 2010, early of course 2009s as uh, Netflix and chill. I try to hit her with that. I try <laughs> to hit her with the Netflix and chill, and. <laughs> I was already used to girls already telling me, okay. And uh, doing that shit, Netflix and chill. <laughs> and then she blew me off. I tried to do do the whole situation with her, but she blew me off. That's what caught my attention. No lie. And that's oh, what set me kidding. off different from her. She blew me off after that situation. And from that point, that's what grabbed my attention about her. I was like, hold up. You don't blow me off. <laughs> <laughs> because you know what? Who wants a... Who wants a simple girl, man? Who wants a yes girl? Like, hey, oh, yes, man. babe. Yes, babe. I, I like confrontation. You can yeah, ask my brother exactly. right here, Big Sarge. I fuck with my girl. I be like, hey, get, enough, get that child cooked, man. You know what I'm talking about? I don't <laughs> get cursed out, but hey, why not fuck with her? You know what I'm saying? Just see where it goes. Why not? Hey, bro. That's, that's <laughs> legit, bro. Like, hey. Like, hey, after, after she told me no, after that, I, I, dude, I chased her for a solid <laughs> two months, bro. Solid two months. Hey, and you know what? Hey, when it comes down to it, you guys, like, you want to hear the craziest thing ever, bro? Like, who, nobody that knows my last name is Sutton, right? S U T T O N, right? Popcorn. I went, yeah. Popcorn Sutton, right? Yeah, you can go with that one. Hey, <laughs> hey I, I'm kin to him. I'm kin to him. But besides that fact, right, my wife called me prior to uh, – it was uh, when I first got back overseas. She called me. She's like, hey, would you like to come and visit time with me and my family? I was like, sure, why not? I was living in Houston, north, northwest Houston. She was living in Pasadena. No, yeah, pass it down. Or Pearland, which whichever I mean, one. It starts with the fucking P. It starts with the P, right? But beside that, she called me. She's like, hey, would you like to uh, come hang out with me and the family? I was like, sure, why not? So I went to go pick her up. I went to go pick her up and found out that uh, my dad stays at times currently resided in Viter, Texas. I said, hey, where are we going? She goes, hey, we're going to Viter, Texas. That's where my dad stays. I said, no shit, that's where my dad stays. Found out that her dad and my dad stays a mile apart pretty much, right? And not only that, her dad lives off of West Sutton Street. West Sutton, Sutton fucking Street. Street. That's meant to be, bro. And then her dad stays a mile away from yours? Hey, that, that was a match in heaven right there. Oh, hey, plenty I, of, I, I, hey, so plenty of fish. you. Plenty of fish you. is a real sight. I thought that shit was a fake sight, man. Hey, Kelly, hey, I need you. What's hey, up? Hey. What you got? You know I'm you outside, know. right? Right. I smell I a fucking skunk. skunk. I need your help. I need your help. I'm about see to shoot this motherfucker. Man, shit, you better that bitch probably sprayed you up, man. That bitch is <laughs> yeah, hey, if you slipping like <laughs> that, you <laughs> like man. You Where might want to look at your feet. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Look I'm at your feet, gun. man. That motherfucker already sprayed you up. I'm going to get my gun. Hold hey, on. One second. Y'all got, got this. this. Hey, my people call that. <laughs> hey, my people call on uh, skunk a pole cat. <laughs> what the hell is that, man? A skunk, man. Hey, my people call that shit a pole cat, man. 
Man, that's I will I will never understand the southern lingo, I guess. Being a northern, being a midwesterner, what whatever you want to call it. A pole cat, friend girl, T lady. I'm talking about putting my, my slogan on a shirt too. You know, when motherfuckers be tripping or they be on some bullshit. You know what I've been came up with? I came with this shit about years ago. Motherfuckers be on that flip flop and wish wash. And I've been out here, nobody else say that shit on this beat. What's stopping you, bro? Some cold shit. I ain't a motherfucker be like, man, you on that flip flop and wish wash, man. Hey, Straight no up. Different than what I'm saying, show up to blow up, or you hear some Mr. Payne need some inspiration. If you believe it, somebody else gonna believe it. Oh, let me personally um thank you, man, for showing up, bro. Um Everything was beautiful, man. Uh, we enjoyed your wife, uh, Franco. My mom, my mom, he must talked about y'all, man. He was like, "Hey, you ain't gonna introduce us to your to your mom." She's mm -hmm. like, "Who's that? I know that guy." There. I was like, "Yeah, that's the picture you got at the house too." I think my mom got a picture of us at the house and stuff. Oh, oh is it crazy? Crazy? Yeah, so she she enjoyed y'all, man. Oh, uh, she said she like that one. Now got a beautiful smile. He said, "Hey, you you can't." Every time you look at him, he would smile. I like that's Mister P, man. <laughs> Pos positive stuff right there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, man, hey, we enjoyed y'all, man. We enjoyed hey, y'all coming through. Um, Frank, worry, Frank. If you if you got him, man, we enjoyed y'all. Oh, oh, did you get him? Did you get him? I'm about to go find it, ass. What the what what the hell is you doing? Fire He looking for the pole cat. 40 44? It's a 45. The judge. That's that's a monster. Nah, it's it's a revolver. I know. Yeah, yeah, that that's a monster. What you got in there? You got some Rhino points? I got some forty. I got some forty fives and some uh, four ten shotgun shells. He about to blow that motherfucker in some noodles. Hey, let that bitch come around. I'm gonna fuck it up. Then I'm telling you, you gonna go over and spray me. You gonna spray the last <laughs> spray. He's gonna spray his ass. I'm gonna spray well, in his ass. If you bust it open, you gonna wish you didn't, cause that smell gonna be stuck on your lungs. <laughs> <laughs> My motherfucker stinks like a motherfucker right now. I'm gonna. Hey, man, I don't want no problems with you, just, just like I want no problems. Man, I think that I think that pole cat sprayed you, boy. No. no. I think, you just on, I think you just on, I think you just on some crazy white boy storm the Capitol shit want to flash your gun all <laughs> over the internet. Hey, <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> hey, I think he also speak grunt shit, man. Yeah. Speak grunt shit. That's what grunts do. After a while, after too much drinking, the guns come out. They right. Come out. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, hey, it's definitely good to be back, man, and to have, and, and to have everybody back and to be talking again. I know this week we just having fun and having a good time, and we'll get man. Don't 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 put a hole in your nipple, and we'll get to what we need. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I ain't think you see them. I ain't think you see them. So that's why I would like this. Hey, like, hey, hey, you know what? what though? This is uh, as a matter of fact. May 30th of this year is on a Sunday. That's the day before the one year anniversary. So when we do that, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put something together different for that. We'll be Wait, able to go now. Hold up on what day is it? May 30th. May 30th. Okay. May 30th. So May 30th of this year, um, May 31st is on a Monday. But well, we'll be doing a show on a Sunday, which is May 30th, be celebrating the one year anniversary. That's gonna be dope. Yeah, we're gonna have to put that together, man. Um maybe we're gonna put like a barrage of shit together in one show. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to people who I know. I think together. we're gonna start from the top to the bottom and, and just mix all that shit in one show, man. And be on this business having a good time, man. Yes, yes, sir. 
Hey, man, we going to let y'all go for the night. We just wanted to catch up and get it right, let y'all know that we back. And please continue to enjoy your life, man. Drop your comments down there. Get your mind right. Again, we're going to get this thing a little bit more structured to really help you show you how to change your life and inspire you to change your life and to get it right. But thank you for tuning in tonight. Hopefully, Whiskey Charlie and the judge, they get the skunk right and he don't lose his, 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 hey, pimple no or his nipple or nothing more. <laughs> Be on the lookout for the Killer Web T-shirts. You know the fitness, the fitness program. Make sure you support the man. Make sure be, you know hold what you're up. be on the lookout, man, for some life changing shit. If you want to change your life and you want to get fit from a real motherfucking grunt, you know what I'm saying. I ain't pacify feeding your ass and none of that shit. Ain't nothing but real shit on my shit. I got it for you, man. I'm had the shit done, man. Salute, baby. Hey, hey, if man, anybody needs to use a gun, I'll let you use it. Don't worry about the gloves on my hands or the t-shirt on my hands. You can use it just afterwards. Just make sure you're wearing gloves at the same time. Yeah? You see? No worries. <laughs> so... <laughs> this is what happens when a judge in Texas signs laws and bills into the land that every individual in the state can carry weapons. This is what we have. We have patriotic Caucasian Americans storming the Capitol protesting their Second Amendment rights. But well, there's nothing in there. There is nothing in there. <laughs> But hey, every hey, right tonight, that's a nice, that's a nice motherfucker. There, I like that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's that judge revolve. That bitch that leave a hole in you, there, boy. I had the pleasure of firing one of those uh, not too long ago. It definitely has a nice kickback to it. It definitely is a nice weapon. That's right. It does have a nice kickback. Well, we're going to kick this back and we'll see y'all next week when we come back to speak on Speak Grunt. Well, we will talk about, I don't know, maybe what you want. That is a big old barrel, too. If you're looking down the thing, the, the, the barrel of that, man, life ain't looking too happy for you. <laughs> life is not. <laughs> you looking down the barrel of that, that up close, life ain't feeling too happy for you. Hey, hey, what's the tall? You might... You might want to watch out, man. You might upset some of these um these pussified gunning stewards, stewards, hey, people hey, that don't expect me to yeah. have guns. <laughs> Fuck hey, them. They, might, they might try to they might get them some one. shit. I got them. I recommend. Yes, this, this is my baby. This is my baby. Yo, my baby. So if you ready to, if look, you if you ready to look at her face, mind. look at she's so beautiful. Look at her face. Look at her face. <laughs> Crazy. Hey, you ready to stretch your mind and take it to the next on time? We always talking about what a man got to do to help his family get through. You know me. I'm also, I'm always reading something, something to help you. This is what I'm on to. The hey, way look, the look, how much look how much I finished. I almost finished. Oh, a yeah. Quarter you, of the you went in. So if you were oh, looking for yeah. and, 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 and you and listen to some of this interview, man, talk about this book. And a dear friend, I seen this sitting on his little, you know, his, his dashboard. And I'm like, oh, that's dope. That's what's up. He said, I'll send you a copy. If you asking for a book, say less. That's that's truly how you get blessed when your homeboys and you passing books to one another to help your intellect get through. The way of superior man, man, you already doing what you need to do. It's going to help you go even further with what you call it to, bro. So check this out. If you speak in that grunt. If you speak in that, that, that life to get what you want, don't be afraid to expand your mind by picking up a book from time to time. That's all I got to say. Don't wait for I have to start my book club one day. Then I'm going to have to charge you for that. So You better remember oh that shit. Say that again? I say you better remember that shit. Yeah, he got the judge, and he didn't judge the whole thing. At the end of grunts, That's people, right. you know what I mean. Back grunts, fuck grunts, where everybody welcome, but everybody cannot, will not be a member. May not have 
heard the words that was for your kids, but if you listen to the message to bless your kids, just catching up on what we've been up to, what we had to do, and the things that we're looking forward to. And then I need you to tap in and talk about what you're going through too and what you're looking forward to making your way to so we can help support you. Don't forget about it. Killer Wolf Fitness is about to come through. It's going to transform your life and change you. Whiskey Charlie show you how to do that family thing too, and I'm just going to motivate and inspire you. You know what we do. We speak to you, grunts. Y'all got something else to say for I, I I turn off and go back? Hey, listen here. Keep doing you, you guys. Hey, battle. See if y'all have any questions. Don't be a don't be a uh, shy person. Reach out to a uh, uh, Kill Wolf, Big Sarge, or uh, me, Miss uh, Me, as in uh, Whiskey Charlie. Reach out to us, you guys. Hey, you about look, to say hey. you is Mr. P? No, hell no. <laughs> look, Mr. P, I wish he could look as good as this uh, with uh, white chocolate right here, bro. But outside that, uh, look, you guys, man, if, if you have questions, you have concerns, if you need help with something, look, I've recently gone through myself with the VA. I know my battles over here with to the left and right of me over here. I've gone through the VA uh, on, on benefits and uh, situations like that. But uh, make sure you reach out for your help, you guys. Uh, if you can't get a hold of them, reach out to one of us. I, I can tell you this. If you reach out, I will give you my personal number. Let's talk, you guys. Let's let's make sure this 22 dives down to uh, slower than that 22 that it is at right now. You guys – Please reach out to us. Please uh, battle, friend, uh, Facebook, whatever you want to do. Reach out to one of us, and I can promise you this, that uh, I'm here for you. That's what I want to say. Hey, I got one last thing, if you know what I mean. Listen, we are talking about catching up today and what we've been doing the last two weeks while we were away. And this is something that I wanted to say. Whiskey Charlie hit us with something and put it straight in our face. He said, y'all ain't up on these glasses today. These are the Bose glasses with the, the microphone, headphone, speaker. I don't have nothing in my ear anyway. So look, this is what I'm attempting to say. Catch up today. Killer Wolf live in the Google house today. When I was in Dallas, I used the Fitbit to get in my room every day, all day. Like this was my key to get into the building, to get into the room where I felt comfortably. Why am I saying catch up? Because the world is moving forward, you see. Stop attempting to live life the way we used to be. Go ahead and adjust. And know that moving forward and truly growing with the way that life is growing is the only way you're going to get to where you want to be. So catch up. Get to the glasses, G. Get to the Google Home, C. Use Siri, Alexa, and all that bullshit AI to your advantage. Because it's what's in between these short distances of your mind that affect your life for real, G. So catch hey. up, man. Stop living in the past, you see. Hey, I got. Uh, I'm just gonna let y'all know. I got uh, eight cameras. I'm about to have four more in my house. Total of twelve cameras in my house. But uh, I got the security light going off here to the well to y'all's left, my right. I'm about to go take care of some shit, you guys. I'm about to <laughs> fuck this shit up. Hey, y'all guys, be real. Hey, we gonna go off the camera, peace. We don't need to see Whiskey Charlie getting called by the police with his empty judge. Hey, who said it was empty? I got some shit in my pocket.